Thank you for joining in today for this episode of The Advocate, a production of the American Society for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy that informs physicians and patients on emerging healthcare topics impacting GI. ASG represents over 14,000 gastroenterologists worldwide and is the leading voice for GI endoscopy. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this episode of ASG The Advocate. I'm Dr. Klaus Mergener, current ASG president, and I'm very pleased to be here with Dr. Mustafa Ibrahim today. Mustafa, welcome. Welcome, Klaus. Thank you very much for such an uh, honorable invita invitation. Thank you very it's much. It's wonderful to see you, and thanks for making time. Uh, today, we want to talk about some critically important issues related to training and specifically with a view towards the international perspective. And I'm very glad uh, to have Dr. Ibrahim with me today. Uh, Mustafa is an assistant professor at the University of Cairo and uh, is visiting um, uh, scholar at the Erasmus uh, University in Brussels, uh, Belgium. Uh, and very importantly, um, Dr. Ibrahim is the chair of the ASGE International Committee and has been tremendously active in that role. And the ASG greatly appreciates all of uh, his contributions. Uh, last not least, uh, we just learned recently uh, that Dr. Ibrahim is the winner of the Egyptian Entrepreneurial Award. And uh, Mustafa, maybe we'll start there and uh, tell us a little bit about the award and uh, what is being recognized. And of course, congratulations for receiving this award. Okay, thank you very much really for, uh, for such an introduction. So the idea of the award that this year in Egypt, uh, they decided to select, uh, let's say the 50 best uh, uh, entrepreneurs with the startups that they have done something different uh, for, for Egypt and the Middle East and to celebrate their achievement uh, and also to inspire future generation. Uh, they selected me for the work, for the educational work I have done during uh, my training center. So back uh, 15 years ago, as a fellow, I realized that there is a big, big problem of uh, endoscopic training, especially due to the high, dem the high demand of the training and the very low supply uh, to, to have patient-based uh, training. There, when I left uh, to Belgium in 2008, at that time, um, I had really a very hard uh, track uh, or a very tough years to be ready to be trained. And I was lucky to have a very great mentor to train me. And then when I, when I get back to Egypt a uh, couple of years ago, I, de I decided to think really how we can train a physician, young physician. And this is why I founded my Royal Training Center with a very simple vision that to provide the quality education via simulators, which can mimic all over endoscopic techniques. And uh, we have done more than 160 courses during the last four years. And me and all the team, we have trained more than 7,000 physicians all over the Middle East. It's a fantastic. And again, congratulations. As, as uh, you know, uh, training is near and dear to my heart. And it's, it's always wonderful to hear that uh, all of us are, are putting so much emphasis on helping the next generation uh, get trained and, and become high quality providers. Um, I want to shift gears a little bit and, and talk about uh, international training programs and specifically um, hands-on training outside of the US with patients. The ASGE is very involved as, as you know uh, here domestically uh, in terms of uh, hands-on training, but um, do international training programs outside of the U.S. allow for hands-on training with patients? I think this is this is the a very very important topic. I think training is difficult everywhere. So being being trained to be trained on patients uh, everywhere, it's having this opportunity to do, to have the hands-on training on patients, it's really very difficult. And I think the problem here is of the very high demand, as I said. Uh, uh, for training and with the very low supply of the training centers and even patients everywhere. And I think this is why the role of hands-on training on simulators and having all of this uh, e-learning nowadays. So the combination of e-learning as well as uh, virtual hands-on sessions, as well as simulators, I can see that this can really fill the gap, especially on international level. 
So I think, and I think this is why I'm, I'm, I'm into training to fill this gap uh, between having the theoretical physician that had already finished his theoretical part and then going to the patient. I think there is a very big gap here that we all should work to fill this gap. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, for us in GI endoscopy as a procedural specialty, that, that, that really is so key. I mean, there's only so much we can do in terms of theoretical learning. Uh, what, what do you think um, is the role of observerships then, of having colleagues come and observe some of us uh, perform procedures? How, how do you think about that, uh, especially on the international uh, scene? I think this will stay the, the gold standard. So we are, in, as endoscopists, we should have always the mantra mentee. So without this, we cannot learn endoscopy. So I think this is very important, not only to see to only to see your mentor what he's doing, but to understand everything. I remember a personal experience when I started my training in Belgium 15 years ago. At that time, when I asked my mentor, okay, I will stay for a couple of weeks to, to learn ERCP. Say Mustafa, no, it's a one year. Because it's not only to see me, to see your mentor doing ERCP, but it's about understanding how we think, how he managed the patient, how, to, how he managed before the endoscopy and, and how he managed after the endoscopy. So again, I think of the observership is the gold standard of treatment, of sorry, of training is the gold standard of training. However, now our role is to find a way to fit the demand because no one can stay for one year every year. All, our, all the young train, trainees all over the world cannot stay for one year everywhere. So I think this is our challenge uh, representing the ASG to find the solution, how to have, have how to train all of this physician all over the world. Yeah, very well said, and I, I couldn't agree more. And we're glad to have you in the leadership role, as I said, at the International Committee, really helping us think through how do we develop these opportunities for our colleagues. And then, you know, for all of us, uh, once, once we finish our training and get out in the world, so to speak, and we start practicing and new techniques and technologies come about, um, another challenge relates to how do we stay up to date? How do we continuously improve our skill set? And what are the opportunities out there for colleagues uh, later in their career, mid stage, even late stage, to continuously improve their skill set? Um, how, how do you think about that issue? Yeah, I think also this is another important point. I think we can, we, there is two problems here. One of them is the young trainees when they are when they travel, for example, and to be trained on something. Before a mentor should accept a trainee, he should first ask him the question: When you come back, you have the facility to do what you have been trained or not. So this is a very important. Sometimes a trainee will travel for three months to learn something, and then he will come back to his his mother hospital or his or city without the infrastructure able to perform what he have learned. So I think this is number one. Uh, before I, I, I think about traveling and, and to be trained on something, I should think what I will do later on. So this is number one. And then I think continuing this, uh, even after having the first, let's say the first round of training, at endoscopy, we have everything, a new, a new something every day. So for example, for myself, I will, I will keep learning, I will keep traveling, I will keep having this, uh, uh, having my man contacted with my mentors, with different mentors. So continuing being updated with what's happening and tomorrow morning, for example, if something happened uh, new, I will travel to, to Japan to learn. So I have no problem with this. And I think this is the key point. We should keep always, always learning. Mm -hmm. Fantastic uh, response. And, and uh, I, once again, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, as as um, you know, and as many of our viewers will know, the ASG is very busy developing uh, endoscopic curricula domestically here in the US uh, to help training programs uh, uh, guide their trainees. And I, I wanted to ask you about uh, formal endoscopic training uh, curricula um, on, on the international um, seen. Uh, do they exist in other countries? Uh, are they used commonly? Uh, what's the role for ASGE in, in the, the realm of developing endoscopic training curricula? Yeah, I, th I think this is, this is another very important point. ASGE has already led the initiative of having the formal training curriculum for many years in the US. ESGE in Europe are doing the same for, for West Europe. 
However, on a global vision, we have no. So this is, I think this is one of our important roles as ASG in the, in the coming years to have the global, really the global uh, guidelines and the global curriculum for training all over the world. Some countries yet, yeah, they have their local national uh, training program, but globally till date, there is nothing globally that uh, something a very, a cookbook that's ready. Okay, if you can go to this, through the steps, you are trained in ERCP, for example. And I think this is our work in ASG in the next couple of years to have this cookbook ready for training all over the world. Great, thank you. And and once again, you're leading that effort for us, and we're very glad to to have you do so. Um, so I, I I want to thank you again for all the work you're doing. And uh, before we wrap up, I was wondering if you have any uh, sort of pearls of wisdom, any any final thoughts for our viewers. Yes, again, thank you very much for such opportunity and thank you for your time and for the ASGE uh, for inviting me today. And just a, a final a final thoughts, I think training is a very long road. We should all uh, be committed to have to learn and to educate and to educate others. And I think it's, a, it's, it's not a one man show, it's a collaboration with everything. Talented physician, mentor, mentees, industry support, society support, so it's everything. So we should all work together for this. And, and finally, I think, and I stress on this, we as ASGE should work a little, uh, more and more internationally to have this endoscopic training guidelines. Fantastic, and, and ASGE is uh, for sure, is definitely committed uh, to doing exactly that. And uh, with your help and your guidance, I, I know we'll, we'll uh, succeed in that arena. So uh, Mustafa, thank you again for making time today. It's, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And to, to our viewers, uh, thank you for watching. I want to once again thank you all for all the important work you're doing, uh, especially during this very hard year. And uh, as we all know, let's uh, get vaccinated. Let's encourage our colleagues to get vaccinated, our patients and everyone around us. This is the pathway out of the current situation. And uh, so please do so in your own environments. Thank you all again, and uh, we'll catch up with you soon on the next episode of ASG The Advocate. Stay safe and keep well. Take care.